God. Mm. Boss is right here. <laughs> I'm leaving that in the video. You know that, right? You know that's going to be the preamble right there. Hello, insiders. I am in LA visiting with some creators and thought I'd shoot a quick video about a topic that's come up in the comments uh, in the past, which is around how we use machines to, uh, to make decisions about videos. For example, when we do monetization decisions, why do we use these machines and how does it actually work? So I talked to some of the folks that work on these classifier technologies and uh, took some notes. So I'm gonna try and simplify it as far as I understand it. May not get it 100% correct, but um, hopefully this helps provide a little more context. The first thing is, this is a huge platform as you, as you all know, and we get about 400 hours of new video uploaded every minute. And so we really need to have a way to evaluate these videos at scale. So we make sure that the content that's appropriate for the platform is on there and it's safe for viewers and advertisers and it's a healthy ecosystem for creators. And in order to do that, in order to process all of that content, we use um, machine learning. And the way we start is actually with very skilled and highly trained human raters. And they go over a sample of videos and they generally will look at uh, each video and decide if they fit in sort of one category which is appropriate for the platform for you know a particular characteristic and another category which is like not appropriate and then we feed that to the machine learning technology and it starts to kind of try and learn patterns and try and be able to figure out uh, whether or not new videos go into category A or category B and then uh, we look at what the machine learning decides and we start to tune it because obviously, as you probably know from our monetization classifiers, it took us a little while to kind of improve the accuracy and we are still making improvements every day on that, uh, along those lines. So as we evaluate the uh, performance of these classifiers, we look for things as well, like we want to make sure that there aren't any biases, we want to make sure that the number of false positives is as low as possible, but we also want to make sure that when there's something that really isn't appropriate that it gets um, identified as well. And so uh, that results in some strange things happening from time to time. So as an example, um, there was a case where uh, a video that was just white noise was determined not to be uh, appropriate for monetization. And that to us humans kind of seems a little strange, but that's how these machines learn and then we tune it further to say, oh no, you got that wrong, like this, this actually would have been okay. And that's why the appeals process has been so important and is so useful. So in the monetization example, if something was identified as not appropriate for ads, but you feel like it meets all of our guidelines and you appeal, and then our human reviewers confirm that your appeal is appropriate, we can then train that machine learning further to, to not make that kind of mistake again. Uh, or make fewer of those in the future. So at the end of the day, one of the things that if you zoom out um, is going on is when you see, let's say, one out of a hundred videos that um, maybe should have been monetized or should have been classified one way and we got it wrong, A, like we want to get that as close to zero as possible, but B, that means that 99 out of those hundred the right decision was made and that allows us to scale and that's how the platform is as big and, and successful for everybody um, as it is today. We are also exploring other ways to address this, this challenge. And one of those is the experiment we talked about in a few videos ago, which we'll link below, around self-certification. So this is an example where we say, you know what, why don't we ask the creators to provide us as much information about these videos as possible and over time, if we can determine that, oh yeah, that information that they're providing lines up very well with what we expect our guidelines to be, then that's even more useful information, potentially, than what these classifiers are determining. Um, that's an experiment that is underway and uh, is expanding, and the pilot so far is going pretty well. Uh, however, it's not something that we can provide to everybody overnight and it's something that will take time for us to scale and to learn and to improve as well 
And it also requires a lot of data for us to understand, okay, yes, this creator is very accurate. This creator is not quite there yet, and how can we help them uh, improve their classification, their self-certification, so that it's more aligned with um, our guidelines. So we know it can be frustrating. As an example, even with this channel, we had a video that was classified as not meeting some of our community guidelines. And obviously, this is a pretty straightforward channel. It was super frustrating for us. So we know how that can, can feel, and, and we're trying to get it as, uh, as accurate as we can. But we also know that even when it gets it wrong one time out of 100, it's super frustrating, and it's, it's something that we got to get better. Now, one thing that people have asked, and I've wondered myself, is, okay, well, you know, we're a pretty big business. We could have an army of humans. Like, why do we have to rely on these classifiers at all? And one of the problems with relying entirely on a human team is, one, it takes a, a long time to review a video. So if a video gets published and it takes a, the, the human raider team hours to review it, Either A, then you can't publish it when you want to, or you publish it and it wasn't appropriate and then creates all kinds of problems for the whole ecosystem, uh, and that's bad for everybody. Uh, the other thing is that you know humans get it wrong too, and they're harder to standardize. So what one, one raider may think is appropriate, maybe another raider feels differently. It's not to say the classifiers are perfect, but it's that the alternatives also have a lot of trade-offs as well. So we think this combination of humans and classifiers with a lot of heavy tuning is really the most appropriate and the best option for the platform. So ultimately, when we have an open platform like YouTube that's so large, um, classifiers are the trade-off to having that kind of open platform. If we were a traditional media company, you know, we would have editors and they would decide what small handful of creators get to, to have their videos available. You know, we've taken a different approach, which is everybody can upload and we'll just make sure that whatever's uploaded is appropriate for the platform in general. And that has created uh, the ability for millions of creators to produce amazing videos. Uh, if we had humans as gatekeepers for every video that's uploaded, that's not an open platform. So as we develop different classifiers, some are very straightforward, like profanity. Others are more nuanced, like brand appropriateness. And that's going to take a little bit more time to tune and, and really dial it in. And while we're in that process, which kind of never ends, um, you will see some strange kind of wonky examples where, like, oh, this video that's just white noise get, got labeled as not appropriate for brands. Um, what's really important is to really keep in mind that that's still only a handful of cases out of the broader range of decisions that that classifier is making, but it still is going to take some time for us to get that down, and, and we're not happy when that happens, but it, it just requires a little bit more nuance, a little bit more training. So some of you may be hearing me say, well, in general, we get it right, and it's only a small handful of cases where we are getting it wrong. You may be thinking, no, that's not true because you know, eight of the last 10 of my videos got improperly demonetized. And that's what we call these hotspots, where these concentrations of areas where we are getting it wrong. And that could be because, you know, the classifier is just always making a similar mistake and needs to be tuned more aggressively or more quickly. And we just want to let you know that we get that. We know that happens. It's part of the, the tuning process as well. So, you know, I just want to wrap up by saying, like, I know how frustrating this can be. I'll give you an example. One of our videos was caught up in a classifier decision, and we were like, how is this possible that, th that this video is not, you know, deemed appropriate? Um, and so we know how that feels. It's very frustrating. Um, but this type of process is the only way that we can have such a huge platform and support so much content. And... It's easy to focus on the times that it got it wrong, but you know, for our channel, it gets it right most of the time. Um, we're still working to make this as, as accurate as possible. We have teams of people that are dedicated to it, uh, and we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep working to get it as uh, accurate as we, as we possibly can. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of context about these classifiers and how they work, and kind of address a few points 
you know, number one, that it's not all machines. Like we have highly trained humans that help with the ground truth training data. Then we tune it. Then we go through appeals. Uh, we look for biases. Number two, that it's a it's an ongoing process. Like we're never done. And number three, like we get it that when we get it wrong, uh, that that's not good for anybody, and we want to have that as low as possible. So I hope this was helpful. Feel free to leave questions or comments below. And in the meantime, keep it real.